don't want a second wave. I don't want a third wave. I want this to be it. Now at six, Governor Cuomo says fewer people are in intensive care, but warns a second wave of coronavirus infections could come if New Yorkers put down their guard. Plus, Easter under lockdown, no parades, no egg hunts, no Sunday services. How the faithful are planning to celebrate during this unprecedented time. <laughs> And the heart-melting reaction of a new mom diagnosed with coronavirus, able to see her newborn for the very first time there on video. Good Friday evening to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Natalie Pasquarella. Chuck has the night off. We start tonight with a small ray of hope in New York's fight against coronavirus. New York State saw a drop in intensive care admissions yesterday. That's for the first time since this crisis began. The drop of ICU admissions was 17. Also, the state suffered 700. 177 deaths yesterday. That is slightly lower than the day before. And take a look at this right here. The trend shows fewer people are going into the hospital. That signals that we've reached the peak. But the governor warns that New Yorkers should be vigilant about staying home and social distancing to prevent a second wave of the virus. Now, there are more than 220,000 cases across the tri-state. New York still clearly seeing the biggest impact. We have team coverage for you on this crisis on this Good Friday. News Force Brian Thompson has us covered in New Jersey. But we start with Andrew Siff, who's live in Flushing. Andrew, you're at the city's newest field hospital. Right, Natalie, it opened today. Nearly 500 beds capable of handling COVID patients out here at the National Tennis Center. And Mayor de Blasio said even if they're not all severely ill coronavirus cases, they're still valuable to be quarantining people and take pressure off of area hospitals. The battle continues. Inside St. Barnabas Hospital, an ER doctor fighting to save COVID-19 patients. Let's hope we reach that plateau at some point soon. A week of encouraging news sparked talk of easing some restrictions that paralyzed the tri-state area in the pandemic. The key to reopening is going to be testing. Uh, I've said that from day one. He said the state lab working on an antibody test to prove you're immune to the virus will soon run 2,000 tests per day. That's great. Sounds like a lot. But 2,000 tests are still a drop in the bucket. But President Trump today said with hundreds of empty beds on the USNS Comfort and inside the Javits Center Field Hospital. We never felt you needed the numbers that you were talking about, and we were right on that. <laughs> And yet the city is still coping with an overwhelming death toll. The mayor confirming that burials on Hart Island in a remote corner of the Bronx are five times the pre-pandemic totals. 125 people per week dying unclaimed by friends or family. When that is the case, the city of New York steps up and says, OK, that person will be buried at Hart Island. The challenge at hospitals also remains intense. Health care workers at the National Tennis Center preparing to receive 100 COVID patients today. All of these beds positioned on what just days ago were tennis courts. You need a lot of capacity to quarantine people and isolate people to make that work. Meanwhile, getting health care workers to their jobs has kept the MTA running trains and buses, even though 50 transit workers have died. By phone, the MTA chairman today told me what they're calling a temperature brigade will help protect those reporting to work. I have already taken the temperatures of tens of thousands of frontline employees. Uh, that's important. Where people have fevers, they've been told to go home. And Mayor de Blasio said he and the school's chancellor will make a final decision on whether to cancel New York City public schools for the rest of the year. He'll make that decision by Monday. We're live in Queens. Andrew Siff, News 4 New York. Andrew, thank you for the latest there. Let's move to New Jersey now. They've reported close to 10,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus in just three days. Now, the state expects this weekend could be the worst since the pandemic began. For that reason, dozens of ambulances from all around the country pulled into a staging area there at MetLife Stadium. News 4's Brian Thompson is live in Elizabeth, where Brian nursing homes are still the big concern. Yeah, this is just 
ever-changing developments right now. Two North Jersey congressmen, Gottheimer and Pascrell, are now calling on the Veterans Affairs Inspector General to begin a federal investigation into what has happened at that veterans home in Paramus. And the mayor here in Elizabeth is calling on the state now to begin an investigation of at least two of his nursing homes. These out-of-state ambulances and crews staging today at the Meadowlands, expecting to be called into duty on what could be a busy weekend. Already, the sounds of overworked ambulances constant in Elizabeth, among many big cities. It's mayor saying dozens of elderly nursing home residents are ill with COVID-19. Four dozen dead, including Annabelle Onis, whose daughter tells me on FaceTime about her father's facility. I'm sure that there has not been much progress. The facility is still open. There's still people dying. For weeks now, nursing homes such as the State Veterans Home in Paramus have taken the brunt of the casualties. As many as 33 dead there. A much lower number, according to the state, because, well, the dead are not being tested. We know that we're missing people. We know that we can't count every person who dies in the state from COVID for a variety of reasons. We, we certainly do our best. And plans to move infected residents across the state into COVID-only nursing homes falling apart as the outbreak spreads. This letter obtained by News 4 sent by a Passaic County nursing home flatly rejecting efforts by the state to accept more than 100 COVID-infected residents. The state admitting today at some nursing homes the situation has gotten out of hand. We are getting complaints right now uh, on uh, specific nursing homes uh, that uh, uh, are considered higher risk. And uh, we are getting PPE for our staff to actually go on site to those nursing homes. With the toll climbing at this city's nursing homes, notifications to next of kin, late or non-existent. A frustrated mayor telling me. There's gotta be more personal contact. These people are dying and they're getting a letter. It's really sad. Uh, the really sad news now is that while about two to 300 people a day are dying in uh, New Jersey over the past few days, uh, experts in the state believe that, according to the information given to me by sources, that number should rise to between four and 600 over the next several days. Live in Elizabeth, Brian Thompson, News 4 New York. All right, Brian, keeping us posted there from New Jersey. Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont wants residents there to keep on following these social distancing rules because he says the number of new patients going to hospitals has stabilized this week. The latest numbers show 68 new deaths for a total of 448. Governor Lamont warned that Connecticut must stay the course. I wanted to just remind you that uh, this is a war that is never won. It's a war that we have to figure out um, how we wind it down in the safest way possible for people. And as we head into the holiday weekend, the governor strongly urged Easter gatherings to be limited to people who are already in the household. Well, a Connecticut company is cranking out face shields by the hundreds. Today, 500 of those shields went to Connecticut State Police. The shields will be worn by troopers who are responding to medical calls such as cardiac arrest or an opioid overdose. These are the, the heroes that are behind those, you know, supporting us. And we can't do our jobs without these types of people. So we're so grateful for them. State police say they respond to around 10,000 medical calls a year. And the need for PPE is, of course, very high.